All right, let's Good. get started. <laughs> it's, uh, is it one after seven? And so we'll call this meeting to order and have roll call. Cynthia Hoyle. Here. Annie Adams. Here. Kara Dudek. Here. Audrey Ishii. Susan Jones. Here. Jeff Marino. Here. Craig Schonkweiler. Here. Lily Wilcox. Here. And so I think we have a quorum. All right. Approval of the agenda. Does anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda? I wanted to chat uh, briefly under unfinished business uh, about the PED plan, and next time we can have Brad come and give us an update. We won't. We won't it's not an action item. Is there a second? I second the amended agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we have approved the agenda. And minutes from the previous meeting, I sent in a few. Did I? Well, I read them, and if I had changes, I sent them uh, for the minutes. Does anybody else have any corrections, additions? All right, so we have a motion to approve the minutes. A motion to approve the minutes. A second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Public input. Does anyone in the audience want to address the commission? Okay. That takes us to unfinished business. And tonight we have uh, Council Member Dennis Roberts here to give us an update on the Boneyard Creek Path, which we had a presentation on. Was it last time? Yes. Yeah, pretty recently, actually. Yeah, this is just going to be a, well, first of all, hello. <laughs> I always have to remember not to go right to work, but say hello first, right? So hi. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we did, I did visit with you last time, and Daryl Fosti and I talked to you about uh, our plan to uh, partner with uh, other people and the organizations in the city to um, create the Boneyard Creek pathway from the western section from the downtown to the University of Illinois campus. And since that time, I think you were actually the very first group I came to talk to. And since that time, um, I've talked to several different groups, and I'm just going to tell you the results. Um, so uh, I went to the um, Champaign County Regional Planning Commission meeting, and they expressed a lot of interest in uh, this project because it also coincides with their their aims and goals. And um, Rita uh, Morokoima Moro Black, who's on their staff, uh, actually indicated that because the city is a partner with uh, um, the CCRPC and also as a member of KUATS, that, the, that they would be able to provide um, grant help in writing grants to actually achieve the goals of fundraising, looking for funds for the pathway. I thought that was really great. But they also stipulated that um, it would be better for them to interact directly with the city rather than to me as an alderman, which I could totally understand. So I went back and uh, talked to the city council, uh, put a resolution on the agenda, and it passed. And the resolution is number 2017-03-17, a resolution of support to plan and create a public greenway and bike and pedestrian multi-use pathway along the Boneyard Creek Corridor from the University of Illinois campus to downtown Urbana. And that resolution passed. So I was able then to notify the uh, CCRPC that we can indeed work together in partnership. So the, uh, the resolution um, also included uh, a statement that we were, we were interested in partnering with many other organizations and agencies who would like to uh, partner with us in creating this, this plan. So it includes you, 
as an agency, and it includes several others. And as we collect them, it'll, I am thinking that uh, the, uh, the partnership will grow and grow. So I've gone then uh, to a meeting with the Urbana Parks District, uh, to the director of the Parks District and one of their assistants, and they expressed uh, real interest in this as well. And they may invite us back in a couple months to present to the Park Board. Um, I've also reached out to the Urbana Senate uh, Sustainability Advisory Commission, and Scott Tess and uh, the friends on that commission also agreed that that uh, was something that they would like to partner in and to achieve. And um, they suggested that I try to contact uh, faculty at the U of I in the planning or the landscape architecture department. And uh, so following that lead, um, I spoke by email with uh, Mary Pat McGuire, who is an instructor over there. And I also heard from, and she, had, she brought the, the, um, uh, the interest to create the pathway and to have student assistance and maybe doing some pre-planning pre for that, conceptual planning, uh, to their faculty. And uh, I received a letter fr from uh, Ellen Deming, who is uh, uh, one of the major uh, professors at the department, saying that she thinks it would fit very well with her class schedule in the fall as a studio project for one of her classes. And she was going to wait until she found out um, what her assignments actually were before she took that farther. But I think I've taken this down the road quite a ways, actually, since I've talked to you. <laughs> down the road. Uh, Dennis, yeah. one other thing I could mention is I know that uh, uh, graduate students in planning uh, look for a capstone project. And so that's another uh, option for student involvement in helping create a plan. So you may want to talk to the urban and regional planning program too. Oh yeah, you know what? Uh, that's one that I seem to always forget exists. So um, <laughs> I don't know why. I'm not well, sure why. But us planners will remind you. Yeah, thank you then. <laughs> Your support is appreciated. So. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it, and I'm going to be having a, also a, a discussion very soon with uh, Lori Pearson of our own department here at the, at the city. Um, she expressed a lot of interest in it, and she's suggesting that uh, she would like to bring in Marcus Rieke, who's uh, one of the planning members, of the staff members, in on that because he has a real interest in um, water ecology, as she said. So. Um, the second aspect of this uh, project is that uh, Clark Bullard, who is the commissioner of the Boneyard Creek, um, and I have actually worked on a proposal to uh, re-establish a true Boneyard Creek commission. Right now it's merely an administrative fac um, adjunct of the zoning department and zoning administrator, but the commission doesn't have any members and doesn't meet, and then there's no public uh, interaction when these decisions about the creek are um, handled administratively, a lot of times uh, without um, public notice even. So uh, the, the decisions that are made in this group are really too significant because of their impact in the community for development along the creek to be um, done in that manner. So. Uh, I've prepared, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on the agenda on next Monday's meeting, um, I believe, to uh, uh, talk about that and possibly direct staff to initiate uh, the work that it will take to recreate the commission. And um, Clark Bullitt and I have actually drafted a five-page um, amendment to the uh, zoning ordinance as um, a jump start for that process. So uh, I think all I'm going to tell you is that I just keep interested in this. Uh, I love your support. Um, I think it's an important goal for the community. Uh, it is uh, mentioned in the uh, mayor and city council goals between 19, or no, yeah, 2015 and 17. And um, we just want to keep this uh, alive and prospering. Dennis, I'd like to add, too, that I brought this up to the campus master planning group, and they, they express a lot of interest, and they're working that into their plans for the future of campus for the next 10 years. Well, you know, that's really, I really appreciate that because I actually attended their Wednesday um, 
show and tell. Mm -hmm. And I understand that they themselves um, are including in that plan mm -hmm. to extend their creek side um, improvements, mm -hmm. up an extra block and a half or something like that from mm -hmm. what, Goodwin to Lincoln, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which right. is exactly mm -hmm. where we want to pick up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen the plan online yet. I don't have the details of that, but um, I'm really, I found it to be just so synchronous. So uh, I thought mm -hmm. that was very exciting, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. I think something's happening here. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, there may come a time when we have a conversation <laughs> with um, the new uh, <coughs> city administrator or the mayor about um, concerns that she already expressed to me about budgeting, uh, creating a commission which would then require additional staff time to be involved. So I'm hoping that this is not an impediment. Mm -hmm. I, I foresee that this commission would not meet on a regular basis, month to month to month, but would probably be quarterly or you know, maybe three times a year depending on um, developments and could maybe meet without staff's assistance at, at some time, just like, hey, the sister city committee meets a hell of a lot without staff mm -hmm. interference, uh, uh, assistance. So, um, Dennis, I was going to say these uh, these pathways uh, have been put in, in in multiple cities throughout the world, if not the United States, if not as close as Chicago, yeah. um, and the financial impact is phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, yeah, in a positive way. Sorry, in a positive way. That way. Um, so uh, that would be my. Um, I mean, not just like to see. Beyond financial, there's also obviously like pe not obviously, but people like living by the path. They like buying property by the path. They like being on the path. So, if not only just designing the path, but I'm not sure who, if there are people at the university, I'm assuming it could be the urban regional planning department or people who study like financial impact of paths like that that might help with your argument to the mayor mm -hmm. or to other people about. Looking into how you know how fast a path like this should get put in for because I know for example in Chicago they had been dragging their feet on what's the 606 for years and Mayor Emanuel mm -hmm. came in and then they partnered with I could tell you the foundations they partnered with but basically just came in and said we got to get this done and they just kind of they re just they were like this mm -hmm. is just incredibly important to keep to retain citizens of Chicago and just for the financial impact so something like this I mean that. that that's the mm -hmm. kind of pro that's why we're all nodding our heads why this is such a good project is because this is all the stuff that we study so well if, if you bring uh, that expertise uh, forward to help me because I don't have so okay. much of that depth in that area I'm just a kind of a enthusiast well no I just <coughs> um, when Annie mentioned the, uh, the economic benefit, I was just going to mention uh, Trails for Illinois is a not-for-profit mm -hmm. organization, mm -hmm. and um, they've done a lot of analysis. Like and, yeah, mm -hmm. and Steve um, Bucktail. Bucktail is their uh, executive director, yep. and he also could be a good resource to get information mm -hmm. about uh, positive economic impacts of trails on neighboring properties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the study's online. Yeah. So, Lily, did yeah. you want to say something? Uh, as well as urban planning, there's if you just to answer what Annie was asking, you know, there are probably other groups. There's also uh, a tourism uh, academic unit, and there's also to uh, mm -hmm. a community health academic unit. Has oh, yeah, that's right. Bachelor's and master's programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the community health aspect is sort of the new area that a financial resources are coming for for pedestrian and cycling infrastructure because. People are beginning to realize that it's it makes people mentally and physically happier to have these sort of spaces. So right, we I was actually on uh, this is go I I don't want to take too much time, but I was actually on the bus tour uh, of the realtors um, oh, in Urbana oh, yeah, right. um, mm -hmm. a couple of days ago, huh. and uh, one and I I didn't get this guy's name, but one of the realtors turned to his uh, partner in the chair and he said. As they drove across the Boneyard, um, which we, you know is on the Race Street Bridge, which normally, if you're in a, in a sedan car, you don't really see down into the Boneyard, but because the bus is up high, mm -hmm. they looked into it and they said, "Wow, I didn't know that was there." <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so uh, you know, it's like you know, even the thing that we've done so far is like the almost like the best yeah. hidden gem, you know, that nobody knows about yet, because mm -hmm. it's not all that readily uh, visible until the trees get a little bit taller, perhaps. 
but more time and energy and we'll come to all that. The, the one thing that I would ask is um, if you can uh, have a representative from BPAC uh, involved with your commission and to keep us actively engaged in that, uh, we, would, we would really like to uh, do that. And so we'd like to be involved in the work that you're going to do. I certainly would appreciate that help. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, those are the, just the kind of, uh, you are the, just the kind of representatives mm -hmm. that would really make the commission sing. Great. So I, I would just like to say it is the trust for public lands mm -hmm. is who actually purchased the 606. Right. <laughs> um, so it's kind of a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting financial maneuver the city of Chicago did to make it happen, but it's, they're called the trust for public land. And I, I have contact information. So uh, Rita Black is the one who uh, offered assistance in preparing mm -hmm. She'll uh, know. grants, yeah, which I she's think she's great. probably really good at that. She's great. So, I mean, I imagine that, you know, maybe she said that the grant cycle uh, for a lot of things. I, I was thinking of, like, what, FEMA or, you know, something which probably, probably mm -hmm. is never going to happen. But, but uh, um, she said that some of the grant um, cycles were every two years and that we may have to wait to apply in um, the fall to get a 2018 and that's grant. public grant funding that's the funding that she more I don't know if they've they've had one private grant I think through State Farm to do uh, safety education uh -huh. uh, but mostly she's referencing public uh, grant funding and we definitely should take a look at that but there's no reason not to look at the private sector as well and um, you know we could put together uh, more than one source of funding to help move this project forward. Yeah, because the other aspect is art. You're creating a place-making space, mm -hmm. and then there's there's funding for art, for art and exercise, mm -hmm. and there's there's great place-making potentials for this. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure once you the students will I'm sure definitely in, talk about that. But that's there's definitely grant funding for that type of infrastructure. Well, well, even if the commission uh, may take a couple months, perhaps even to um, massage through the review process and acceptance process and and may even uh, may, there may, we may even have trouble perhaps um, with that process I don't know but nonetheless it would be great to um, to start to meet maybe once a month or I, I don't know maybe this commission could have a spur I mean I don't know I mean maybe there's gonna be a way that we can meet mm -hmm. in some more informally mm -hmm. but still get mm -hmm. some work done uh, because the city does back the, the process because we have this resolution and I think we could actually, I mean, if there's grant money that's going to be available, you know, in the fall, we probably mm -hmm. should consider about, you know, preparing our packet of grant applications sooner than later. I don't know. Well, a working group is probably the route for meeting monthly, and that's not a commission, so it doesn't have to you want the commission for taking action and that's the body that the city you know needs to provide staffing for but a, a working group can uh, get together and and for example light the night we have a working group that organizes that yeah. and so that has been the best way to approach that kind of activity well I'll try to bring some people who want to do the same thing that you do and uh, maybe we can sit around uh, a conference yeah. table and really have fun. Yeah, that would be great. Well, thanks so much for coming and giving us an update. We're very excited by all the progress and, and you've and made and the time you've Lastly, you know about this, I imagine, right? The, uh, yes, our pedestrian, which one do you have? The pedestrian plan? Yes, we're going to talk about that. Okay. Uh, a little bit uh, under announcements, we'll definitely Great. talk about that. Okay. Thanks so much. <laughs> and I'm not going to stay for the rest of the meeting, but I really appreciate it. Well, thanks thank for you. coming. Thank you. All right. So next on the agenda is the uh, BPAC survey. And we have the survey put together, and we had talked about it in, in the past, and we had talked about using the city's uh, survey monkey um, account to do that and send it out. And so I wanted to check in with you about that and see if we can move forward with that and, and send it out. It'd be great to do it during bike month. Right. I, I looked into that, and a request ha needs to be ma made to the mayor to okay. um, make this happen. Also checked with city attorney about the legality of posting it on the city website. Again, going through the mayor to do okay. that. So there needs to be a request um, from the chair to the mayor. So we don't need to make a motion, we just need to make a request. Well, we might, it might be a good idea to make a motion. Okay, and all then, right. Um, you okay. know, about 
what you're asking for okay. and make sure the commission approves of that. So. Okay. All right. So would someone like to make a motion that a request be put forward to the mayor to put out a uh, BPAC uh, survey uh, using uh, Survey Monkey during bike month? I motion to do all of that. <laughs> I second the motion to do the Survey Monkey stuff. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do, I think, can I get you to operate our presentation and I'll hang it up just oh. to hit the forward button? Over here? Yeah, okay. would you do that? Sure. Great. Um, we uh, have been working on our uh, annual report to uh, the city council and we had almost everyone on the commission involved in uh, creating this report. The most uh, recent version of it, Annie and I have been working on uh, the presentation to take to the city council and the report, which will be more of a word document, but for presenting to them, we didn't want to have uh, a lot of words. Uh, we want to give some information and some graphics. So uh, we put this together and we wanted to show this to you tonight, get your feedback on it, and we'll take your input and, and revise it. And then Craig can put it on uh, the agenda for uh, the city council study session, I think is what, what we want to do, um, and uh, give them our, our report. So he knows the process for doing that for us. So we uh, put together the information uh, that we have and put the ordinance that established our commission because we have quite a few new city council members uh, coming in and we felt like probably, well, it certainly is overwhelming to learn of all the various commissions and committees that the city uh, has going. So next slide. Here we go. So. Uh, in the uh, uh, ordinance that created us, or the, um, I don't know if you call it an ordinance, but the uh, city council's action to create our commission, they listed a number of activities for us, but the overall uh, statement of what we are doing is to advise the city council on how to make bicycling and walking viable modes of transportation in the city of Urbana. And that is is uh, the big picture uh, statement about what we do. So next slide. So then we go through and list our accomplishments and we tried to whittle this down to the, the key points. And so we uh, pointed out that we've provided information and recommendations on capital improvements and planning devices to the uh, city staff and they have shared that with the city council. We looked at the uh, Illinois Department of Transportation's Highway Safety Improvement Project. They had done existing conditions at the point that they came to us and presented that information for University Avenue, which has become uh, a the street in town where we have had the most pedestrian crashes in recent uh, years. And so we made some suggestions to them that uh, one of the things that they should look at is slowing vehicle speeds uh, as part of the recommendations for that study. And that we wanted to make sure that there was an opportunity for public input early in the process before it starts to seem to the public like it's already a, a, a done deal. Um, and so uh, Craig took those concerns to um, IDOT and relayed that information to them. We also took a look at Bradley Avenue bike lane design. Craig brought that forward to us and we uh, approved that and we're very excited to see that happening uh, this summer. Next slide. We also looked at the uh, University of Illinois Armory Avenue bike path project. And I believe, Lily, did you bring that to us? I believe you did. And uh, we looked at the University of Illinois' presentations uh, regarding the North Cunningham uh, sidewalk project. And well, I thought actually that was not you. That was North Cunningham is the city. I didn't catch that earlier, I'm sorry. Annie, Annie look to me for corrections and I, I missed that one. Um, the North Cunningham sidewalk project was a city project and uh, traffic law enforcement is another thing that we talked about in one of our meetings. We've also uh, 
taken a look at um, issues related to motor vehicles parking in bicycle lanes and uh, Craig took a look at that information and uh, said they would uh, come back to us uh, if with some recommendations about whether or not we need to do that. At, at this point, we haven't uh, taken any action on that. Next slide. Then we reviewed the bicycle master plan final, uh, prior to final approval, and we made a few recommendations. Uh, we wanted to take a look at uh, 25 mile per hour speed limits in, on some residential streets. We also changed the goal for bicycle mode share and increased it to 12 by 2021 and also changed the uh, and then to 14 percent by 2026 and did it in a shorter time period than had originally been recommended and then we approved the bicycle plan and we were very excited about that and um, we also reviewed and made suggestions on the uh, proposal for our Urbana uh, pedestrian master plan, which is now underway. And as uh, Dennis uh, alluded to, we ha already have begun public input meetings for that. And I guess we could, uh, next time we'll get uh, Brad to give us a sort of an update, because I think we'll be halfway through those at that point maybe well maybe more than halfway through by our next meeting they should be finished I think yeah it should be finished there are quite a number of those uh, going on in various neighborhoods and on various dates to get input uh, on the uh, starting off on the uh, pedestrian plan all right next slide we also took a look at uh, Urbana Bicycle Way Finding Plan, and that is that scheduled for completion uh, this year, and we're excited to get that uh, rolling. I, I wouldn't, I'd say um, maybe not scheduled for completion in 2017, maybe 27 slash 18. Yeah, I think that's probably true, it, because it hasn't, yeah, we should say 2017 dash 2018. Someone taking notes? <laughs> well, Kate is taking notes. <laughs> Good I have a good memory, but not this good. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We also looked at presentations on wayfinding infrastructure in terms of best practices and creative make, uh, place making opportunities. And um, next week, uh, the wayfinding plan for Peoria is going to their city council. And once they've taken a look at that, I will pass that along. Uh, to everyone to take a look at. That'll be a nice opportunity for us to see an Illinois uh, city that uh, isn't too much bigger than us that has uh, moved forward with that. We had presentations uh, on CU Safe Routes to School and the programming uh, that they do. We also uh, looked at a new volunteer program that was created this year. Although it wasn't very needed this winter, we didn't have very much snow. Uh, but a Snow Angel Sidewalk Snow Removal Encouragement Program. And that's something that the uh, CU Safe Routes to School Project, the Urbana School District, and MTD have uh, been working on. We reviewed uh, the, the Kuat Sidewalk Network Inventory and Assessment. That was a very comprehensive study of all the sidewalks in the community, and that was the foundation for our being able to uh, start our pedestrian plan, which we really wanted to do for a while. We also looked at uh, some free community events, mostly open streets in this category. We looked at it, calling it a people on pavement community celebration. And now that uh, celebration is uh, looking at showcasing what we're going to be doing with MCOR and how that's gonna create a good multimodal corridor for uh, getting between downtown Urbana to the University of Illinois. Those are the first two phases. Uh, and there's also the phase in Champaign uh, that Green Street will also be being uh, redone. So we can uh, look at that too. So you, the uh, MCOR phase one uh, has started and um, phase two will start in January of 2019. It's a very big project. You can go down and see some of the activity going on uh, as we speak. 
We had a presentation on bicycle registration programs and a very interesting piece of information. I think the City Council will be interested in hearing this, that we had more than 700 bicycles recovered that were either stolen or abandoned and that it costs a lot of money for us to release them for repurposing between $500 and $900. So we feel like perhaps a registration program would help us uh, address some of those issues. And we would like to see a centralized registration uh, program that would take coordination between the two cities and uh, the University of Illinois. We had a few uh, pieces of unfinished business, but considering how much we did, that's pretty good. Um, we decided uh, that we still need to take a look at whether or not we ought to have enforcement of motor vehicle parking and bicycle lanes. It doesn't, it hasn't risen to the top of our agenda in that we haven't had a lot of uh, public requests for it, but something we wanted to look at. And then the bicycle registration program, what we can, can do with that moving forward. We also talked about we wanted to increase uh, community engagement and try to be creative in how we uh, get input from the public. We wanted to look at communication strategies uh, for showcasing our bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure and, and build pride around the fact that we are the only gold level bicycle friendly community in Illinois. We're in a pretty exclusive club nationally in fact. And and also help residents and businesses in the community understand the uh, how becoming platinum uh, would benefit our community and what it would take to get us there. And we've talked about whether or not we could have some sort of a Facebook page. Uh, that's something we would still like to take a look at. Maybe have some kind of online newsletter. Uh, how do we share events and meetings, develop events and publicize them. Um, those are all thoughts that we had and uh, ways in which we would like to try and get the word out about the work that we're doing. So our focus in 2017 is very much to uh, work on implementing the Bicycle Master Plan and staff has already started taking a look at the implementation strategies uh, and steps for us on that and to work uh, with the staff and consultants on the Urbana Pedestrian Master Plan and work with city staff to develop and improve uh, the wayfinding plan. And that is the summary of our presentation. One of the things when I looked through it again today that I realized is I would like to have a page with the list of all of our BPAC members. And it also I thought we need a picture of us in here. I realized we don't have a picture of us. Uh, so at some point I would like to get uh, someone from staff to come in and take a picture of us so that, that we have that uh, that we could include in our uh, publicizing what we're doing. There's more slides. There are more slides? What else do we have here? Oh yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's the last one. Yeah, right well it was to increase community <laughs> engagement and events. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And these were some of the uh, things that we wanted to do is our year-round inclusive uh, activities for both walking and biking and to include people uh, between 8 and 80 maybe even younger than that and so these are all things that we some of them we are doing uh, for example uh, walk with the mayor that they're looking at getting that organized uh, in June uh, through the public health district in uh, May as part of bike month we have a lot of activity going on and we've also started creating more uh, sort of casual, uh, family-oriented and, and in-town rides to introduce people to bicycling as a mode of transportation. We have Bike to Work Day, Walk and Roll to School Day, Bike Month in May. So we have all those activities and um, we want to sort of develop a year-round calendar. It'd be great to have, you know, like a, a polar ride in, uh, December or January and and maybe when we get the the boneyard all done we could do a, a boneyard polar walker ride there are all kinds of options for what we could do our high priority this was the recommendation we wanted to um, talk about with the City Council is that we would like to see all of the local agencies pool their resources and fund a full-time uh, bicycle and pedestrian coordinator position and the place that we think would logically have that uh, coordination capacity is the Regional Planning Commission 
but we, we, we have people doing bits and pieces here and there, and it would be nice to, if, if nothing else, to start off with uh, an intern position to help us with some of that work, and, and then as we go along, maybe we can find funding to uh, move toward a, a full-time position. So that is the presentation we're going to make to the city, and we wanted to get uh, your feedback. Did we miss anything? Do we need to uh, add stuff? Yes, Jeff. Um, in regards to the, um, the pooling of the resources for the position, uh, mm -hmm. that was one of the recommendations of the bike plan, if mm -hmm. I recall. So that's already been adopted. So yeah, that, mm -hmm. when you do your presentation, that's something to include would be to... Uh, Add that in here and say that this is a recommendation from the bicycle. Yes, yeah, because the, so, the council's already, you know, it's not okay. something that we're Coming pushing up for. With. They've already agreed yes. to, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And so we should reference that. It's also been mentioned that um, the position is something to strive for towards platinum. Isn't yeah. that right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. So you're kind of combining goals. Yep. Okay. I think that's a good idea. What was the last picture on the last slide? I think Meadow that's Meadowbrook. Meadowbrook. It's one of the uh, unpaved pathways. Is it? Is it too? Do you, I mean any feed, any feedback? Seriously, is it too weird of an image or? No, but right. it made me wonder. <laughs> like the rails to trail is uh, not in okay. this anywhere. Um, It'd be fun to have a picture of the boneyard in here too. We could work on. Okay taking a picture before we go to city council what we've already got done okay thank you so much annie and cynthia yeah. and everybody who contributed to this yeah. for putting it together she did our graphics and uh, i was supposed to do the accuracy <laughs> i almost made it it was a lot of text wrangling. <laughs> I didn't know if I could cut down all the text. I felt kind of bad. And then Cynthia was like, yes, Annie, you're supposed to cut it all down. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty good at slicing text. So if you ever want Can word reduction. <laughs> Ask Sue. Right, because I'm good at spewing them. So I have a Note lot of self. practice. Note to self. Yes, Craig. So the um, after the new council and mayor are seated on May 1st, the next committee of the whole would be May 8th. And or if we miss that meeting, it would be May 22nd. I am gone May 8th. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. I'll be at the National Planning Conference coming back the 9th. So if we do May 22nd, that would be the next. That gives us lots of time to get it into perfect condition. Yes. And like the first one. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. true. Right. And it's May 22nd. Second. Okay. Have we talked about you being the BPAC permanent chair, as this slide says? Have we brought that up yet? That happened last night. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't think we brought it up in the meeting yet. We have not yet brought that up. I, that's, you're correct. Okay. I was just. Yes, I, we, were, we are going to talk about that. That's um, always, that at least selfish. for sure under announcements. Okay. I just made up a title and gave it to her. <laughs> well, you can leave the permanent off. <laughs> <laughs> like, that sounds Chair forever. for I life. I don't know like how official all this language should be. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, we can just say be pet. Chair of Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory forever. Commission. Forever. Yeah, yeah. And maybe on the last slide, what we should really do is list all the members of uh, BPAC. I think I, it was a little bothered I was the only one there. I think that this probably is the right slide. But, you know, we were still work. Annie was rushing to get this. We were both rushing to get this uh, finished up for tonight. So, and we got here. And it's the first presentation we, you know, that this organ we've right. done. So this yeah. is, I mean, this yeah. is good. There's now going to be a format. Absolutely. And they'll expect it every year. And yeah. People have to take pictures every year of bikes and pedestrians. Yeah. I'm just, just going to say it. that. <laughs> I kind of panicked when it came to the photo part. I was like, oh, do well, I have any pictures? I have lots of photos, so I can also get, <laughs> throw some your way. <laughs> yeah. I do, too, as well, if you yeah. need, especially if you need campus. Theme. Well, I think, she yeah. got, I think she did that this <laughs> afternoon. I did. <laughs> so if anyone has pictures they would like to see I, in the presentation, I, please just email me, yeah. and I will, I will I make, them, I'll make it work. I did notice a kind of, like, 
the same. They all look the same. Yeah, yeah from one same one sort of similar event, which you can guess what that similar <laughs> event was. Um, <laughs> we did recognize the really event, and it is event. a barrel of fun. <laughs> yeah. And I think Only we should keep the fiery hula hoop in there. Yes. Myself. Mm -hmm. I thought that was great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Annie. We applaud your helping do this. Hooray. Good job. And then uh, just we wanted to, to request that uh, Brad come give us an update on the pedestrian plan. And I think one of the things I've been hearing from the, the commissioners is that uh, we would like to be more actively engaged uh, in, in the process. Um, and we've got a process laid out. So if we could get uh, a presentation on, on the timeline and some specifics about where where we can be involved in giving input, uh, seeing, you know, I, for example, I would love to see uh, the results of the existing conditions analysis and the and the public input, and uh, that sort of thing, so that. Uh, we can we can do that as we go along and and be actively involved in in it so that was why i wanted to ask about it yes so um with this particular master plan there is not a steering committee actually bpac will serve as a de facto steering committee so okay. so far it's been internally staff and rpc meeting mm -hmm. um, rpc's done some background existing conditions things like that and then they were gathering the data now from these PED master plan meetings, which mm -hmm. there's, I think, um, eight of them total. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the plan would be that um, staff would then present um, some of those findings. Okay, great. And come to it. Super. So. And okay. Brad is actually, he's on vacation today. Yeah, he's I knew at that. the end of the day. So he'll be back, so. Okay. Anybody have anything else on that? All right. Oh. Uh, just I shared on Facebook the when the meetings were and I tried to hit is, is this what we're talking about mm -hmm. yeah and I tried to hit people up and different I tried to hit like different mm -hmm. council members up and different people up so just to make sure that like people feel welcome and that they can come and that we want their feedback and and Cynthia made a good point someone had had some information that they wanted to share and Cynthia on Facebook just replied, please come to the meeting and Yes, they were giving us their this. input on a Facebook page that wasn't anything to do with the city. I said, but you really need to come and give your input. But, that's, but people don't know that. <laughs> they I don't mean, seriously, know that. people don't know they that. Really so, don't. yeah, so I yeah. thought it, that was really good feedback that you were like, hey, mm -hmm. just please try to come to one of these meetings. So or go to the website and give input. Yeah, so, and that was like, and there's a lot of like neighborhood block mm -hmm. things. So just, that was just, you know, if you know people who are, who have mentioned things to you, just tag them and let them know to come. Yeah, and if they can't come to a meeting, they, they can go to the website and they can send an email. And uh, one thing that um, Kuwaits is really good at in their public input process is every piece of input is recorded and included somewhere. So people, sh their input is a public document after that. Uh, it's a part of the public document. And I amazingly had trouble figuring out which meeting I can get to, but I'm, I'm going to get to... Uh, to one of them and all of us should try and make sure we get to at least one of the meetings um, I think that's really important that that we be involved the the meeting schedule went out through the neighborhood listservs and so that uh, generates a lot of uh, eyes on the schedule and if there are any other organizations groups etc that you are aware of absolutely send it to them I would encourage that members of BPAC go to two of the meetings, and uh, one of them that you pick and the other one is going to be at Craner Uncorked, April 27th. It's going to be a lot of fun. We should all be here. Does that involve wine tasting? <laughs> From Art Mart. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> hmm. Maybe we should take a moment and just publicly say what oh. the meetings are yeah. will you read will you read through them yeah I'll, I'll, so there was a there was a meeting held Thursday April 13th for the north and northeast uh, Urbana area that was at the uh, Urbana Park District building there was one held um, this evening um, Tuesday April 18th it was for the East Urbana area and that was held at Brookins Center there's an upcoming meeting on Thursday April 20th which is for the Crystal Lake slash King Park area. 
That is at Crystal Lake Park Lake House, 206 West Park Street. There is one on Tuesday, April 25th, and that's for the West and Downtown Urbana area. That's at Pizza M Back Room Downtown. There's one um, Thursday, April 27th, um, at the University District um, area. That would be at Cranert, um, the uncorked um, on Cran in Cranert. Tuesday, May 20 or May 2nd, Tuesday, May 2nd, South and Southeast Urbana um, area which is at the Yankee Ridge School Gym. Thursday, May 4th, the Central Urbana, which includes the historic East and Middle area. That's at the Urbana City Building Council Chambers. And okay. then the last one is Saturday, May 6th, and that's a citywide um, meeting, and it's at the Market, of the Market at the Square. These uh, meetings are also posted on the city website, mm -hmm. along with a corresponding map, which um, syncs up with each meeting location. Mm -hmm. But anyone can go to any one of the meetings. Yes. They do not have to live yes. in the area in which yeah. the meeting is being held, but they tried to uh, distribute them geographically so that everybody had something that was close to them. So at each meeting, uh, the, the uh, Consultant Regional Planning Commission gives a um, short presentation. It's really a good chance for the public to provide their input. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's facilities lacking, maybe there's problem mm -hmm. areas. That's a, a great opportunity for the public to come out and uh, state their case. Mm -hmm. okay. And you get to do a mapping exercise with yarn and tacks <laughs> and scissors. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun. So it's kind of like a craft crawl. It is. Yeah, I see. <laughs> okay. All right. So I think now, if there's no more unfinished business, we'll move to new business. Okay. Under new business, we had a request to talk about downtown bicycle parking. Uh, Annie Adams requested that we do this one. And so we wanted to. Uh, hear from you about issues with downtown bicycle parking. I know we have two, two items I know that um, we have a count of how many racks that we have in downtown. And one of the things that I was thinking is that maybe BPAC could coordinate a usage count at some point. I think that we do not know how much the bicycle parking is used. It's sort of like doing a parking study when you really don't know how much people are using your parking uh, to take a look at that. And um, also, I think we're aware that there are some business owners in the downtown area who would like to have uh, like the city of Portland has a program where you can convert a parking space into a corral, bike parking corral. And we have one of those uh, downtown now, but I think there are additional people who would like to have them, but there's not, we don't have really a process for doing that, I don't think, and maybe staff can sort of fill us in on that. But I know myself, one of the things I have found uh, is that the parking on the south side is the street in front of businesses like Flying Machine and Pizza M and the Thai restaurant and Dancing Dog are always full. And uh, I once in a while get a spot on a rack, but I oftentimes end up uh, fastening my bike to a parking meter. And no, no one's going to go park their bike across the street and cross the street. Uh, because that's one of the advantages of riding your bike is that you ride to your destination. And so there's more parking on the north side and that parking doesn't seem to be utilized as well, but I'd, I'd like to confirm our sort of anecdotal uh, impressions about bike parking with a, a count and maybe we could talk about how to do that and, and drum up some uh, volunteers uh, to do that. Lily has done this on campus, so we might uh, engage her experience in uh, doing that and engage uh, Champaign County Bikes and some other groups uh, in helping us with that. So, Annie. Yeah, I would, regarding the how we would do it, my question, my concern is, is we have the really nice on-street bike parking, and that last picture in the slide, um, I actually yeah. did on the program, I actually put on an Instagram page 
And I got feedback from, honestly, around the world of people being like, this is so cool. I wish my city did this. This is really exciting. Um, and the only concern I have with where the on-street bike parking is now is it oftentimes looks empty. Now, I don't go out. I'm, I'm normally, I'm just, it might be it's full and maybe like once Blackbird opens, it'll be more often full. But I just really see a need for the on-street bike parking more over by uh, the flying machine, the Pizza M, possibly in front of the Cohen building. And I do know someone from the city did go and talk to businesses and ask them about if, you know, what they would think about the on-street bike parking. And I know one business owner told me, she said, I don't like the color blue, and I thought it was kind of an obnoxious looking object. So that kind of made me sad. Um, but she, you know, she has an opinion and she has every right to share it. Um, so I also just get sad though when I see a wonderful thing like we have not being used when we really have a need downtown for it. Um, so that is kind of my. And I would have no idea how we would count bikes over like a, because it's 24 hours. Because like, you know, at night, because I know there are, and I also have talked to other business owners who said, well, that rack is always empty. And I'm like, well, your business actually closes at five. So, yeah, yeah, like you might not know that was, you know, like, and I know for like there are, I took a pic the, in the presentation, there is a picture of the rack completely jammed up uh, because they actually moved it from its current location and put it in a different location. Um, so I, I just... That's my downtown bike parking question. So I think we have two questions staff might be able to help us uh, with. One is we do counts of like car parking. I know we've done that. Uh, we have sort of a process for doing that when we, for example, looked at streets that we wanted to put bicycle infrastructure on. So that, that question. And uh, then two, is, do we have a process for a business owner requesting conversion to bicycle parking? At, I know in cities where they've done this, the business owners feel like instead of one customer, they get 12 in that spot. And so it, if there are businesses that, that particularly attract people who would ride a bicycle, they find it a very uh, profitable thing to do. But I, I wondered if we have a process and, and if we do, if someone could help us know what that is. Well, I, I can speak to the, um, when we count for um, car parking, what we do is we look at, we don't, you know, obviously we can't be there every minute. So we select times of the day and we go by and basically just physically count. So we set up a spreadsheet or a tally sheet. And um, a lot of times what we're looking for is a little bit different than what you're looking for at this study. But when we're looking, we're looking for use. We're trying to figure out if it's perhaps residents that are using it or commuters using it. <clears throat> because that does make a difference if um, somebody is using it as a residence then you know that that demand is usually fairly high whereas a commuter may come in park and then walk um, when I say commuter a lot of times it's students maybe walking and trying to avoid paying some type of fee on campus but so what we'll do there is we'll go and count say prior to eight o'clock in the morning select a time we'll go through maybe mid-morning we'll go through mid-afternoon then we'll go through mid-evening so you could, that's, and that's kind of how we'll do it. We've done it, um, we did it on Green Street. We divvied up staff time and we did it for the MCOR project um, because at some point here, and we'll have to refresh that study, but we'll be coming to council to ask for the parking to be removed. And we did it for a, a seven day period. So we actually did Sunday through all the way through Sunday. So um, that way we could see use on the weekend and then on the, in the weekday, but it, you know, in this case here, if you know what you're looking for, it just, it's one pass through. It doesn't take that long. It's just getting somebody to come out. Maybe, you know, if I was structuring something like this, you'd want to have something maybe mid morning, mid afternoon, mid, um, mid evening, something after five to see, you know, are people using it then? You'd probably want to see if there's a difference on the weekend. Maybe there's a hot <clears throat> time. Um, you know, and, and um, obviously I think prior to eight um, or seven in the morning, I would doubt that there would be much use um, at that point. But, um, you're, you know, if you're looking at it, it's whether or not people are coming during the day and in the evening. To second that too, if you're looking at a, a where question, um, I have a lot of experience with the, the campus one and it's, it's vast. It's 
a vast census for sure. Um, it's always about 6,000 bikes that we count. And one very interesting thing is if you want to really look into this in a small area, it might not be too much to do a couple of different, to try to find bikes that are overflow parking areas, so bikes that are not parked you know, in that area that you're necessarily counting. So you can surface a block instead of just a rack. Um, because you'll find that sometimes people ha are forced to move into different areas or they, they f make their own bike parking area because maybe they wor the facilities weren't placed in the appropriate place that was convenient or visible. You know, obviously our, our racks behind hedges aren't as popular as well the streets. So. But you wait, then you'll have a, a, you really have, you have a number to know what that is. And you'll have a visualization too of what that really is. So, and to Cynthia's point about, I'm beginning to understand Cynthia's point here about what the process is for businesses to ask for this. Because I know, for example, as you're talking about this, Sipyard actually did put bike parking racks in their facility, but people don't really recognize them as bike parking, so people don't really use them. And also, you have to lift up your bike and stick them on the wall. Um, so that is that. And then the other issue is there's a lot of, in that area, you have, um, I've, t I've actually talked to the business owners of all those, of the area where they kind of desperately need some on-street bike parking. Um, and uh, they also want their Curbana, though, you know. So there's a, and then they also want, you know, the to-go, they want, like, one parking, and I get it. Like, you want one car parking spot, so you know, for pick up and drop off and, you know, for a variety of reasons. Um, so, but I do understand Cynthia's question of what is the process, because that's, that's an interesting question. Well, we, um, we anticipated that that might come up. So we mm -hmm. have with us tonight um, Mike Bronk, who is our city, ar city arborist. <laughs> well, but it makes I, sense because if people don't have a place to park yeah. their bike, they chain it to the tree. Right. right. And if you have good bike parking, they will not use the trees. The tree right. cut down. But Mike's, Mike's <laughs> instrumental, and he's, he's got the background, and um, he was willing to come tonight um, and talk about it. So one thing that we've been working on for probably over a decade now is to provide parking, kind of saturate the downtown with bike parking as best we can. Uh, not so much, um, you know, tr trying to, although we, we do try to guess where bike parking is needed, what we've mostly done is put it where uh, it's demanded. And so we've allowed uh, bike parking to, uh, and the demand for the specific areas to dictate where we concentrate our spots, and I think that's worked very well. Um, we only have so many uh, bike racks that we purchase a year, although I think we're flush right now for a couple years, so it's not like we're short. Uh, at this stage of the game, it's just the manpower of getting them installed. So we are really open for where you guys think we need racks. And I kind of want to go over what, what we did with the bike corral. So back in 2015, I think some of you were on the BPAC then, uh, we talked, Kevin and I came, we talked about our bike parking. And uh, one of the things that we presented to you was a new uh, system, which was the bike corral or the cycle stall. Um, and we presented uh, a location, we wanted to have it in the downtown area. Well, the, the difficulty, as I found, going, trying to find a, sp a space in the downtown areas, we are um, catering, as Annie said, to a number of factors. Uh, people that want to drive to a location, handicapped spots, uh, businesses that want the um, one spot for a quick pickup, like a food item, uh, a music store that, that needed a space for the people who brought big instruments that uh, had a hard time carrying them. So there was a number of uses in the different areas. Uh, some of them were required by law or handicap spot, for example. Uh, we have in uh, Main Street, I learned, educated myself after looking into this, in the only place that it can be because of the way the federal law looks at a block 
and where they have to have a handicapped spot and has to be near an intersection. Well, if you look around that particular block of Main, Broadway, Elm, and Race, that's the only place that is uh, parking space next to a handicapped spot. So, so anyway, there's nuances like that. Then you have the business owners. Do they want a bike corral? Do they want a parking spot? Uh, and things like that. So we studied when we got the bike crowd, or before we got the bike crowd, we studied spots that we thought um, would make good locations. Uh, the, as you see, the number one location over there where it's packed with bicycles. Um, we have a Curbana there that beat us to the punch. And in fact, the Sipyard put a bike corral or a bike parking up because we, couldn't, we wouldn't allow them to have a corral to take up that one last space. So then we moved on. Okay, so if we don't put one there, uh, we looked at the northwest corner of Main and Race. Uh, and then we looked at the central location by Crane Alley. Uh, we looked at a number of available spots over by Broadway, uh, which were plenty empty and um, probably wouldn't take up any vehicles that parked there, but that was just the point. Nobody parked there. Um, so we were really down to three locations. Um, we decided, uh, as you see number three, the very west location, it really gets the bike rack over in that area, but it really isolates everybody else east of Race Street. So uh, we looked at 2A and 2B, and, and they're not three and four because, or two and three, uh, because they were that close. Which way do we go? And so we canvassed the downtown. And the folks uh, over on the north side by Crane Alley were more responsive to having a bike corral in that area than the, the legal office that was over at the northwest corner at that time. In fact, they had elderly clients that they said, we'd really like to keep our parking over here because they use our spaces. So it was easy for us. Um, that was the, the, the one-year spot that we decided to pick. It, this was an experiment for us. Um, and I think the way to look at it, of course, you know, when we put it out there, I wanted to see it packed that night. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, I, I've heard it, got, it gets used more in the evening than it does in the daytime. Mm -hmm. But the oh, fact yeah. of the matter is, it's there for people to use. So um, whether it's full or whether it has one bicycle in it, Jackson Bird of Action Jackson, Action Jackson Comics, he goes, I love that bike corral. I ride my bicycle to work every day. So he and because we were looking at moving it. And he came up with an idea, and I heard it through the grapevine, uh, that, uh, hey, let's look at the northwest corner again, because we are having problems over there west of Race Street. We have bike racks south on Race. Um, uh, we have, in fact, we've got some uh, uh, art, art type bike racks there that really draw attention, which we have things locked to right now that I, I have to somehow get off. Um, but we have um, bike racks north, and we kept, we stacked them north all the way up to the school district. We really have them packed in up there, um, but they don't get a lot of use. It's too far north. Uh, the ones over by the Courier are starting to get used. Uh, they're fairly new, uh, but people are becoming more familiar with those. Um, I forgot where I was leading with that. Oh, the northwest corner. So I went around the downtown and canvassed folks again. Um, the people over at Crane Alley again said we like the bike rack where it is, but we're not opposed to moving it. Uh, and in fact, uh, I found that most everybody I talked to uh, downtown were, was good with the new location at the northwest corner. Um, the fact that the building is uh, being demoed, in fact, the building owner was okay with the bike corral. Uh, although I believe with a restaurant uh, bar type uh, establishment that sounds like that's going in there. They, they may want a curb in at some point. I don't know. Uh, but this is a one-year endeavor. Each year we put the bike corral out. It's movable. That's the beauty of it. Um, so uh, we started talking about it. Uh, one of our staff members came up. We were just about the, uh, we were probably about three weeks away from installing it. That was the location. And somebody mentioned, what about construction? You know, where the dumpsters need to be parked, where contractors need bags, meters bagged, oh. So we called up, we called up the building owner and said, did you think of this? You know, it may be a better spot. We'd, we'd really appreciate you allowing us to use this location for a bike crowd, but you know, here's a thought we want to share with you. Um, 
And he goes, you know, that's a good idea. I would not want to make it harder on myself to remodel this building. So yes, uh, let's not put it there. I think I might want to use that for a, a roll off or, so this year we didn't move it because of that. I think we, uh, we need to think about it. Um, we can look at moving it down to number three. It does take away some of the night use, I think. Uh, the question is, would we want to put two in the downtown area? I don't know. Uh, the, the thing that we have to uh, decide staff-wise is we have to uh, probably uh, get on the, the, the budget request now uh, for next year uh, because we don't have these budgeted uh, to, to purchase these bike crowds. We wanted to see how this one was going. And of, of course, color was one thing we were sh speaking of color. Uh, you wouldn't believe how hard it is to uh, get a consensus on color. Uh, but, you know, having the, being the person that was leading it, I don't wear black socks, but <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the last thing I wanted was black. But the purpose of the color was we wanted people to see it. So there was a really bright orange color that I thought was neat. Um, the blue is our city color. Uh, blue is a bright color. It's our logo, isn't it? What uh, is our, isn't it? It's green, green and maroon. And green. 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 Oh, okay. There were some really bright colors. Yellow was another bright color. Uh, so this went around and around, and I think we went a little bit conservative, stayed away from the orange. Um, we stayed away from yellow because it blended into the delineators and things like that. But we were trying to get a color that stood out so people could see it and be attracted to it and know that it's there. Well, I like the blue. But we're not, we're not locked into, you know, blue. Uh, but so that's the scoop behind the bike corral. That's where we are now. Uh, our intention when we talk to the businesses, when we put it out, is this is a one-time shot this year. We may move it next year. Uh, so we're kind of feeling our way through it. Uh, the question of... Uh, and I think this follows suit with Cabanas as well, and bike crowds, if somebody was to request it. Do we have a procedure? Uh, yes, we will examine uh, the request um, uh, on an individual basis. There are just so many um, nuances to the locations of these things to try to set it out in stone. And uh, you've got to go through these 12 sure. measures. We don't want to turn people off for one thing and say, okay, well, I don't want a business on Broadway because, well, look, they don't have, they won't allow bike corrals there. Uh, so, hey, you know, we're going to feel our way through it. And I think it, it lends itself to some flexibility when we get these kinds of requests. Uh, but but certainly think about uh, whether you think number three would be a good location. We, we didn't even number the one across the street, which would have been a great location, except everybody wants to be on the other side of the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mid-block, bike corral mid-block, uh, we would cause a lot of problems with that, yeah. Yeah, I think that that's true. Um, well, I have a couple of uh, thoughts. First of all, would, would you or some of your staff be willing to coordinate our doing account of usage rates? I think we can help drum up volunteers, but I, it would be good to have somebody in charge of that and to lay out the times and dates and give us forms and maps and, and then send us out. I think we could, what we could do, uh, and, and Kevin's got some ideas, I think. Oh, good. Uh, well, no, oh, good. No, no. Kevin I, I think we've got, you know, at the very least, <laughs> what we can do is we have a map of the locations of our bike corrals. And I mean, mm -hmm. if, if it's mm -hmm. just a simple matter of uh, handing those out, somebody dating it and timing it and writing numbers down on, and circling the locations they saw and just writing, I mean, it's pretty primitive, but that gets it done. That's what we've done on campus. And the other thing we did on campus was note the bikes that were not parked on bike racks. Mm -hmm. And that gave us this as uh, Lily said, an indication of uh, lack of capacity or locations that need additional uh, bike racks. And, and so I think we want to note that as well. And so, Kevin, did you want to say something? Oh, not really. Um, I, you raised I mean, I, no, I, I totally, I will, I will volunteer myself to, to lead that up. But Ray. I do want to say um, the, the process that Craig laid out um, I think is is the process that we'd want to take mm -hmm. is is view it at sort of you know your times throughout the day um, and at 
-hmm. at least a couple of different days, like a weekday and a weekend. And a Saturday. I think we yeah. want to do a Saturday during the farmer's market. That's going to be our absolute peak period for bike parking in, in downtown. And, and I think we want to encourage people to bike to the market because otherwise it's a giant traffic jam. And the more people we have coming by means other than driving, uh, the better off we are for the market. Because it, at some point, the congestion deters people from coming. Mm -hmm. And people who live really far away, you know, say someone from Tolono wants to come, they don't want to bike here to go to the market. So they're going to drive. But those of us that live in town, biking is a, is a good option. I'll leave it at this. Right now, the only locations that we have to install bike racks on my to-do list is around the uh, west side of Lincoln Square and the north side of Lincoln Square. I think Can, there's some so. room along here. Uh, well, you can't see where I'm pointing. Um, You're saying number three. <laughs> over by uh, the Thai restaurant. I, I think there's some space there for a couple of more racks in between meters that those, I think, would get used a lot they would definitely get used I'm wondering like so I think number three is actually a good place for the rack the one night that I did take that picture was probably it was that it was there people did find it because that's sort of a direction people are coming and then they get off their bike and they walk around and then they're like ah. it's that first parking space after the corner yeah so well it's number three isn't it three yeah mm -hmm. yep it's number three and I do it is it I know it's probably not possible, but I'm just going to ask. Um, if you do have bike racks, I mean, could you just put the bike racks on the street? Or is that, like, just not a thing that's done? That's well, first of all, they're black. So at night, uh -huh. I, I would say we wouldn't do that. Okay. It would just be fine. a visual. I'm okay with that. I just need um, to know. Well, I just think they get hit. I mean, they're, they're not yeah. meant to be into. seen like a bike corral. Uh -huh. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, because it is pretty dark down that area. But I do know, like, when you stand there, I was talking with, I, I did have a big powwow with a bunch of people one evening about the bike parking situation, and we all did agree 2A or 3 were, we were like, this is kind of it. There is really no other, there's really no other place for, um, for bike parking. Kind of off topic, but Chase Bank does not have bike parking, and Chase Bank is down in the mini mall plaza area like broadway down Bro okay past it's, the creek yeah past, past the creek past boneyard they have zero right, bike right. That is correct. yeah they have zero bike parking i just always bring mine into the lobby and it's kind of rude but well, that's what well well it's not you know it's more kind of our job, sort of, though, to bring it to people's attention that there's mm -hmm. no bike parking. Because Chase is probably like, so I don't care. But I, anyway. I would say if we put a bike corral at 3, I think that uh, 2A or 2B it would also be a good spot. I mean, Crane Alley has been a really big supporter. And if they like having that okay. there mm -hmm. at 2B and the new business going in there wants it, uh, I would hate to move it uh, yep. when they have been really wanting it there. So if it's possible to include a request for uh, another a second one, yeah, a second one, that would give us the flexibility to accommodate more than one location. And I mean, I have seen empty bike parking across the street, but people don't, you know, once people are, and we'll get to this in the next agenda item, but like once people are, have made it safely across the street, they're not going to be like, oh, I'm going to now take my bike and walk across, you know, four lanes of traffic and then I'll park my bike, you know, so it's really is, that's why people just kind of. Yeah, I personally choose where I'm going to bite my part to avoid having to cross with a signal. Yeah, and, and it's a give and take. Uh, everybody wants to be right where they want to go. Yeah. So we have parking decks because we don't have enough, you know, parking in front of the stores that people right. want. In fact, we've got, I don't know if you all know, we have over 21 bike parking yes yeah. and those are a great deck. location in bad weather yeah. bad weather yeah. awesome. mm -hmm. so covered parking weather. there yep. I honestly um, had no I idea know. about them I was going to my dentist like <laughs> swearing I was like why I would like to park my bike somewhere and I felt so moronic when everyone told me there is covered bike parking and at the end of the a block. bike repair station yeah <laughs> But I do think, I think, and I also think there's also, though, something to be said for that on-street bike parking being there every year, if it, you know, and then if we do add another one, because people now, because I do, I actually do just park my bike there now, 
and then I just walk over to where or whatever mm -hmm. I need to do. So mm -hmm. I just always, mm -hmm. I'm like, it's here. I know it's here. I'm going to park my bike here. Well, so. and keep in mind, the, the second part of uh, uh, installing these things is one budgeting and getting the money to purchase it but the other is staff time yes and installation yes so um yeah. i'd have to say the bike corrals are a little easier to install and uh, than the curbanas because we bu actually build the curbanas mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. they take time i think there's an afternoon involved and that's after they get all the anchors set and everything that they can mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. they have to put them in they take them back out they don't stay all winter long so there's a limit there and uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's just, I just threw it out there that it... Um, well, I, I would like to say in terms of permanent conversion to yeah, a bike corral, what a lot of communities do to avoid the problem that you were talking about is they uh, use the flexible bollards mm -hmm. to delineate the bike parking area. There are a variety of other methods that they use that make it very visible that are not uh, that expensive so if we wanted to look at it I personally think that uh, we need to have a little firmer grasp of where we would want that before we suggested anything like a permanent conversion because sure. I wouldn't want to do that and not have it be uh, well utilized but there's some options that might be lower cost the issue then of course will be that, that there's a little extra uh, maintenance that is involved uh, for snow removal right yeah Other comments? I would be very much into it being out all year long it's so easy to park your bike to that thing and not have to like lift your bike up and try to fit it on one of the I really I really like the design of it I like it's just so easy to use and it's just so nice because you aren't supposed to have your bikes on the sidewalk you're actually supposed to have your bike in the street well that that, so. that particular one you know we flipped that around it's designed uh, for the protective bar to go on the street side um, but with our system with a bike uh, path right there that was prohibitive now when we put it over on number three we made turn that around so people access it from the sidewalk I'm not sure I believe uh, it was in normal they had one installed that way and uh, someone very helpfully went down one night and turned it around for them <laughs> so guerrilla <laughs> tactics are sometimes employed uh, but yeah, I think originally the idea was people backing out into traffic uh, we've got that safe zone because we've got a of bike, nice line. Bike, bike lane yes. yeah. uh, but that was the concern of, uh, of people being in the street stationary mm -hmm. uh, and then getting mm -hmm. hit mm -hmm. uh, but you know we're flexible we think different here in Urbana it's easier so. to get them in and out with the opening onto the street with our our yeah. our street design yeah Kevin you had something uh, I just wanted to, to point out and Mike mentioned that we did the um, the inventory of all of our bike parking downtown and mm -hmm. and there is that interactive map online that we yes. have of all of that yes there is all a map of, all of the bike the racks downtown, downtown so yeah. I can share that link with everybody again just as a refresher. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. And it might be a good refresher this spring and summer for people to encourage mm -hmm. when you come downtown, there you know, there these are all the places you can, you can park, park your bike if you can't find parking at these other places. And does the map note the bike repair station? It does not. We should put that on there. I'll see what I can do. Okay. <laughs> I think that I think a lot of people aren't aware of it and I'm assuming that we have a system also for notification when the bike pump quits working I know that's been an ongoing issue maybe someone could check that is uh, nothing's more exasperating than to go pump up your tire and have it let all of the air out of your tire <laughs> which I have gotten calls uh, about that uh, so at one point we did have a sticker on it with a phone number for people to call but I haven't checked that recently if not, they can call Public Works, and okay. we'll check it out. Okay. One last thing I'll mention. I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but our new racks uh, that we're using mm. have a, uh, um, oh, QR. shoot. Q QR Q Q thank you, QR code. And so that uh, takes you to a website that provides the do's and don'ts of bike parking. <laughs> so it's, it's neat. <laughs> I, I like those bike racks because I don't have to worry about my bike getting knocked over. I like those bike that was the purpose lot. of them. Uh, mm -hmm. It keeps them from falling into the sidewalk. Uh, the U-Racks, uh, very uh, usable. 
Uh, but a lot of a lot of times bikes can fall over on those, and then they're blocking something. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for filling us in on process. I think that was very helpful. Yeah. It's nice to know that we have one and that we're flexible, and um, we'll we'll look forward to uh, doing a, a count of our bike parking. So thanks so much for coming. You're Anything else on downtown bike parking? Okay. So next, we uh, Craig's going to give us a little. Um, information on sure. the pedestrian timing at downtown uh, signals particularly race in Maine and Broadway in Maine I I know we used to have uh, automatic um, the signals would automatically come on and when we redid that and put new signals in that changed and um, I know from my own experience that because of the way the intersection timing is set up right now it's very frustrating if you have to cross more than one direction the amount of time that you wait and particularly if there are no cars coming um, so we wanted to get some more information about uh, how that signal timing is set and if there's anything we can do to uh, improve it because pedestrians are the primary people we want to be servicing down there for the businesses we want to make it as easy as possible for people to get out of their cars and to shop at more than one destination in our downtown and so ease of movement is a, is a high priority so Craig if you can give us a little information that'd be great thank you um, so several years ago um, prior to the road diet that went into effect there were four lanes of traffic um, we uh, the city received a um, ITEP grant to install bike lanes downtown during that process, uh, we looked, obviously, to put the bike lanes in. The only way to do that was to remove a traffic lane. And in the process of doing that, um, there's really only so much time and space that you're dealing with. So the, the short answer is there's a trade-off that occurs. So what we did when we did, um, we looked at the road diet is we had an analysis performed by a consultant engineering consultant who was able to do a simulation and um, the four lanes taking them down to basically or two lanes west or east down to one lane west or east has an impact on the operation of the system prior to the um, the road diet going in Cynthia is correct it was a pre-time system meaning that it just cycled through we went to an actuated system where basically we do that based upon a call from the side street and the idea is that traffic would keep moving east and west now when we say that the idea isn't we're not talking about speeding through what we're talking about is we're primarily concerned with the stacking of vehicles so one of the things that when the consultant looked at the road diet was initially was that traffic was going to back up in the through lane and in the left turn lane through this mid block crossing by the uh, cinema gallery and when we would have traffic blocked for eastbound traffic and westbound traffic and they're crossing each other that creates an unsafe crossing location mid block so one of the goals was well we had to clear that time so that means you have to have greater time on the east west movement than you do the north south movements and that's the heavy movement throughout the, the system here um, so it's an actuated system and it's coordinated to um, basically have east-west traffic through the rush hour periods which is basically the two hour period in the morning which really is more like an hour and then around four to six in the evening which is more centered around five o'clock um, in response to Cynthia's inquiry we went and double checked to make sure everything was working our signal technician looked at it today and everything's fine everything's functioning fine um, he took some readings I went down and took some readings as well uh, midday I also went down at uh, 5 and took some readings um, the trade-off is that when you push the button from a side street say at race or main a race or Broadway you do have to wait you have to wait for the walk like to come up the signal cycle is about somewhere between an 80 and 95 second cycle what we're getting is anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute and a half delay when you push the button so that's the trade-off that we're, we're we're holding here so really um 
there's a balancing act, like I said, between time and space. And this was the trade off to be able to get the bike lanes in downtown. So how has uh, traffic been impacted on first Fridays when the lights have been switched to blinky red? Those, um, you know, primarily they, they seem to be working fine. Um, you know, all things considered, but we, those are viewed as basically like a temporary condition, not necessarily something you would, we wouldn't be doing all the time. Because one of the things is, is the slower a car moves through a space, the higher percentage chance you have of them actually stopping. Um, and the other question I would have is, it would be a more pedestrian, I don't know, but I think it might be a more pedestrian friendly space if there were just stop signs. Um, I could be, I mean, that could be a crazy concept. Um, but I do know, like, I, when I'm a pedestrian in downtown Urbana, I really do feel I have to choose one side of the street or the other. I have to choose one destination or the other. I think it's a barrier. I don't want to yeah. go, like, if I'm coming from the courthouse, mm -hmm. getting across the street to go to lunch just seems like a hassle. And then most people just break the law and cross the street whenever. Mm -hmm. Well, I, one of the questions I have regarding uh, the signal timing, um, I've never seen cars uh, backed up even when they were blinking red through the mid-block crossing they, they were tonight they were tonight yeah they okay were, they were on the east so in, in the, the peak eastbound period movement. yes they were they were backed up okay through the crossing on the east okay so I think what I what I'm hearing is that during those peak periods we need to maintain the signal timing that we have the true. question that I have is during off-peak periods if pedestrians can't get, be given priority so that when the button is pushed you get first priority because my frustration has been when I push that during off periods and I had to stand there and wait for a left turn cycle um, and sometimes a whole light cycle before I got through people get pretty frustrated, especially when there's not a lot of vehicles during those off-peak periods. During, during that peak period, I, you know, the pedestrian traffic is not that heavy. I mean, there are people going to their vehicles, but the times when people, we want people out of their cars and down there moving around are really outside of those peak periods. And so I, and I'm pretty sure based, you know, with the new signals, we've got the capability for the programming to be more sophisticated and do that kind of thing. So I wanted to see if that was an option that we could take a look at. That's actually being done. That's already being done. It's programmed, there are different mm -hmm. timing plans. So it's timed for the rush hour and then an off peak it's timed. Um, even at 1230 today, our technician found 30 seconds. That was the delay for the, for the pedestrian. So I guess I'm sorry, but 30 seconds is no, acceptable. No, 30 seconds is not a problem. I, right. I don't have a problem with that, and I've always been really happy <laughs> if that's the amount of time I waited. Right. Uh, what, what's what been frustrating to me is when I've had to stand there through a cycle and a half, uh, the one full cycle one direction and a half on the right. one where I push the button. And so I'm there you know, for two minutes before I get to cross one direction. Uh, because I didn't get there to push it in time for the other direction and so to do the two, you know a two-leg turn so it actually made me start wondering too whether or not we could you know I had started thinking about a scramble we don't have enough pedestrian traffic I think right. to justify that at this point but that that would address some of the issues because one of I feel like Annie I feel like the street is acting as a barrier to pedestrian flow and people doing more downtown because you're like oh forget it I'm not going to cross the street I'll just I'm gonna go I'm going to leave <laughs> and well, I know that I mean, might sound ridiculous but I think it's true I well you know I, like I said it's a it's a balancing act mm -hmm. um, as far as um, I mean I've heard people say five to ten minutes that's that's not possible that there's that much no delay. I've never waited ten minutes <laughs> um, but I will you know it's a balancing act um, we've actually observed people not using the pet push button so if you come up to the mm -hmm, up yeah. to the system you don't push it mm -hmm. the system's not going to know that you're there you will wait mm -hmm. you will wait for infinity until you can get a call mm -hmm. I mean it's not going to know you're there there's a reason for the push button um, I, when I was out there at five there was a gentleman that did the same thing he didn't push the push button. Is so it I went possible to have the pedestrian signal cycle with the signal, even if it's not pushed for that phase? We, 
we can do that, and when we do that, then we we do incur delay. So if you keep that in mind, when mm -hmm. you when you push the the call, it adds time. It adds time. Adds time to the delay mm -hmm. because it's actually mm -hmm. set to a certain mm -hmm. walking speed to cross the mm -hmm. road. Um, so again, it's a balancing act, and mm -hmm. actually that takes away the function of actuation. So it, it takes it into right. a less sophisticated system the way it, if we do that. So there's a trade-off here. If, if mm -hmm. we went, for instance, we could go back to, um, you know, somebody mentioned a stop sign. We could do flashing red perhaps or a stop sign, but now the delay could be such that then we incur um, basically backups that are not acceptable. And then what yeah. happens is people, from our experience, they begin to cut through and they and, avoid downtown. And they behave badly right. too. I, I don't think we can do, because of the capacity issues at, at particular times, I don't think we can, we can do that. But I would like for us to see if we can give more priority uh, to pedestrians during the off-peak periods. And the best way for doing that is not you know clear to me at, at this point but well, I I'll tell, we can look at it we'll look at okay. it um and and um okay. further but i i can just tell you what the say because that was the first question i asked the signal mm -hmm. technician what what are what are our timing plans can mm -hmm. we what are we doing in the off peak and he told me yeah we're, we're only running mm -hmm. the major in the uh, mm -hmm. primary peaks not in the off peak mm -hmm. but and then i went down and looked and then i'm i'm seeing it's it's yeah, there's a delay there, but I wouldn't call it. Um, so it's like relative, right? I mean, it's 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 all relative to whether or not you want to get to that side of the road. Well, that's certainly going to, you know, be where you're not wanting. You want it to be snappy immediately. Um, sometimes it is snappy. It just depends also when you push mm -hmm. the button in the cycle. Right. I think so that's if you, where if the you push it at the at at the most inopportune time, you're going to have to wait. Mm -hmm. Right. I, just, I, I have to wonder too if it's not that you push the button and you expect it to turn to walk. Right. You push the button and then you're like 30 seconds, right. 60 seconds, 90 right. seconds. Oh my God. Okay. Now I've made it across the street. Now I'm trying to get to Dancing Dog. Like, let's right. say you're like, and then you're like, now I'm going to, oh Lord, here we go again. <laughs> 30 <laughs> seconds, 60. You're, and so I think that could be part of it is that push that you feel like, well, now I pushed it, right? And then you like you pace around, you look yeah. around. I actually push both of them. That's what I do. I don't. I mean, I don't <laughs> know. I, I just push both and hope one of them sooner or later turns so I can mm -hmm. go in a direction. That's. I just I find them to be really frustrating. Right. I, well, and you yeah. can always go to the mid block crossing, which is not controlled oh, by signal. If you're and I would like to say the mid block crossing looks dangerous. And it works. It's right. fast. Like you can just, I was really surprised. I avoided it for the longest time and then I started using it and I was like, this is like way faster. So now what I do is I actually backtrack, go across mid block, then come forward, like <laughs> just to avoid, like avoid the whole right. thing. So I don't, but Craig, Lily's I been would. trying to say something. <laughs> 30 minutes. 30 seconds, 60 seconds. <laughs> I, I would just like to say that if, if we don't have a solution on this now, we should keep this on the unfinished business because I, I know that I see people all the time. I walk a lot in this town. I walk a lot in Champaign. And I don't see anybody. Uh, I see it, it's a really mixed bag, about 50-50 of people who know to press the button. They might see the button. They might know that, that well, maybe that's a thing. Maybe it's not a thing. It, mm -hmm. It's going to turn for mm -hmm. me anyways, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of people think that it's going to just turn when the light goes because yeah. cars go, bikes go, everybody goes when the light goes. Of course, I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I do think that maybe the, the, we should explore the best, the most sensical and most logical conclusion that people are already assuming right now. Um, they already assume that they, they can go when the light is green. And mm -hmm. maybe we should explore further what it would be like if we had a little bit of a delay, but we, it, it was a walk sign when the light was green, you know, and there wasn't a left turn. And then people wouldn't, everybody's walking on these reds, and they don't, they're not looking at the cars that are trying to make a left, and they have a green arrow to make a left. Um, and, and that's a little bit of frustration for car drivers. Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. What are you doing? I'm well, stuck in the intersection. And then no car in driver wants to be in an intersection. Yeah. And um, so I, I would really like to, to keep discussing this, try to find a solution that is amicable because, you know, even especially now that we're going to have these summer months, you're going to see it all the time mm -hmm. at all hours of the day. And I know that we could have it 
turned off and have the ped buttons as we already have them installed ped buttons during the the fairly short um but very congested rush hour yeah. in busy times that we do have um in yeah maybe that the an option the the off times mm -hmm. are very off mm -hmm. <laughs> and so people mm -hmm. just assume you know most a lot of towns in the state a lot of towns in the country they do that and so that it's not it's not something that everybody knows to do they just assume why should i press that thing it probably doesn't even work i'm just gonna wait for the green light or you're just like talking and then you're like am i supposed to have pressed this stupid thing what the heck well yeah, like downtown that, champagne no, totally. the buttons only activate the auditory part the, the signals oh. do come on automatically yeah. mm -hmm. um, for pedestrians and so and I think that that's right another away. part of the confusion is that in some places they're coming on automatically in other places they're not and, and so I think it is confusing if you're one of the the 80 percent of this town that thinks that Champaign and Urbana is just one big town blob <laughs> you know how are you supposed to know you're just talking to your friend walking down the street mm -hmm. we should look at a uniform situation here and we should mm -hmm. also look at what people are doing I think a lot of our traffic signal controls are all trying to make it more convenient for people to do what they naturally want to do, just make it safer and regulate it and make it sure that people are, are safe. Mm -hmm. And right now, you know, if you, if you require someone to press the button, only half of them are pressing the button. Most people are just standing there going like, it's a green light. It's my turn to go, obviously, right? <laughs> um, you know, uh, we, in plenty of places like Champaign, we say that. Yeah, it's a green light. It's your turn to go. So it, this is well, very confusing. I, I, yeah, and I understand that. But understand that if you do not push the button and you walk across the street, you, you run the risk of, I mean, that's at your yeah, risk. Absolutely. The buttons are there for a reason, and, and they're programmed. And, um, I mean, we can't control whether or not pedestrians do or do not use the button. Um, all I can tell you is they're provided for pedestrians to use. We can look and try to optimize the signal timing as much as we can, but again, there's only physically so much time, so much space. So it really gets down to this is a consequence of a road dive. Mm -hmm. That's what it fundamentally is. I would say that if in hindsight the idea would be no road dive. I mean, that is the way that you get around this. You eliminate the road dive, and then you take it back to a pre-time system. I well, I would. I would just, just for devil's advocate's sake, I'm going to just say maybe we've made it in a situation due to the road diet, we've made it a situation where place making wise, it, people are comfortable in walking and yeah. it's still kind of frustrating to walk because of our signal timing. Uh -huh. yeah. So the road diet is meaning that people want to be there, they want to mm -hmm. be walking, they want to be on foot and they definitely want to talk to their friends. But the signaling is confusing because we don't have a uniform situation between the two cities. It's a downtown area. People expect that they should be able to walk on a green. Right. I understand that. And I would also tell you that every single si signal within the city of Urbana is programmed differently. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That totally. Is true. No, it is totally no, it true. Is true. And, that, and I think that's why, uh, why the, 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 the if, issue is confusing. If we, we could have a uniform system and just do a pre-timed, but I can tell you the city would be a lot different. Yeah. It really would. Be weird. Yeah. So there's, we there are all these trade-offs that we have mm -hmm. that we're trying to balance. Mm -hmm. and, and what we have here is what we feel at the present moment is the balancing act that is the best solution. We can certainly look into timings further and try to balance that out even further. But right now they're running different timing plans. Yeah, I was wondering about Lily's suggestion that we have pedestrian demand activated during those peak periods, but have the automatic signal for PEDs during off-peak. And we'll look into that. And that might be one way, because I, I think most of the frustration is occurring during off-peak, when there aren't very many cars, and so you think, why am I standing here? When there are a bunch of cars, you're not going to wonder why you're standing there. You're going to be happy when the signal turns, because right. then you know you can cross safely. Well, we can look into that. Okay. I okay. think that might be an option yeah. that, that would uh, help out. Yeah. And particularly during the, you know, after five, uh, I think that's when we tend to have a few more people down there. And I, I think yeah. that would, yeah. The, and and we, we definitely uh, improved safety down there. And that's, of course, why we got the grant was because uh, having one lane each direction is so much uh, safer. So we definitely want that. Um, and we can see if we can work out a solution that will make it very work better. Predictable 
predictable uh, situation of someone if they drive to downtown Urbana and they want to go someplace, they're going to park at the parking garage or they're going to park at Busey after mm -hmm. six, and and they're going to yep. cross the street to get to Sipyard or Flying Machine, and it's mm -hmm. they're going to just walk on this red because they didn't understand they had to push a button. Yeah. So that's what that's the frustration on on my end is I'm, I'm worried that after 6 p.m. there's a lot more pedestrians out it's not like the five o'clock traffic yeah and, and then, I understand our goal is not to make it frustrated for anybody absolutely no, yeah we're, we know totally. yeah we're not, yeah. We're yeah. not, we're we not understand sitting that. here I'm yes, not sir. yeah we understand no 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 yes, we sir. understand we, totally <laughs> no, we get understand it we get oh my goodness <laughs> it's um I was I saying, mean you know it's, yeah. it's hard you know it I guess what I'm just telling you is that we're trying to do the best that we have that sure. we can we understand yeah. that I was gonna say on first Fridays, I cannot tell you how many people are like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's kind of crazy to me. At a certain point, I just said, well, this is the greatest art project I've ever created, Blinky Red. <laughs> um, and, and people were, people, I, I can't tell you, people loved it. I mean, they were, they still, they're like, this is just so nice. I mean, there are more pedestrians than cars at that time. So it's, you know, if we're going to talk about that, which is never a good, that's never a good metric to say, because there's more cars, you got to do it this way or more people this way. But it does, it really works. Like it slows everything down. Like I remember the first time I biked downtown uh, for an event that, and it was like, well, I was like, why is every, oh, I was driving. I was like, why is everyone driving so cautiously? And what is, and I was like, oh, blinky red. Like it slowed everything down. Like the whole ecosystem suddenly just became this like, and it was really, it was actually kind of nice. So, well, I think that's, that's a good, that's a good just, point. That's maybe just my, that's, maybe that's something we can explore further yeah. in the evenings, you know, um, yeah, if you could take a look and, and let us know what, what you come back with. We okay. we would just like to explore some options and see if, if there's a way that we can uh, make it so that uh, it doesn't present a bar barrier to a lot more pedestrian flow downtown. Okay, we'll do that. Any Anything else, anybody, on that one? We've beaten that down yeah, into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Thank you for uh, presenting that and helping us understand uh, what our options are. Thank so, you, Craig. Yeah, we appreciate that. Thank Signal you. timing is always fun. I can tell you from having Thank done you, tra transportation planning that signal timing is always fun. And no one, it, and everyone's an expert. Yeah, I think that's, no <laughs> that's the other thing you discover uh, is that everyone is an expert. So, and we know we're not experts, but we, we would like to explore some options with you guys. So under announcements, I, I uh, will say last night the City Council uh, made two appointments to BPAC. I am now the uh, chair until the end of June, I'm filling out the <laughs> expired term. I saw that. So I'll, I'll be asking again, I guess, uh, to uh, be reappointed. And then we got a new commissioner, uh, Leo, and is, is it? It's Clovis, right? Clovis. Clovis. Noel. I'm always confused and re trying to remember that. I, yeah, I guess that's <laughs> it. That's why I got that programmed into into my head. So, and so then we'll have a nice balance of uh, gender uh, orientation here, and um, we still need two people. We need someone from the school uh, district and an at large. Uh, please recruit uh, some people, encourage them to make applications. I did a little bit of that. Um, I don't know that, that apparently I didn't succeed in getting people to apply, uh, but uh, we would like to have some more applications to fill those spots. And Kevin, did you have something? You were, you look like you were going to push the button. I, I do. Okay. Um, we've, um, since our staff re-looked at the um, terms for everybody, and we've posted that to the website okay. so now there's a, a pdf document that has everybody's terms in there nice. it's like a three-year cycle so we're trying to mm -hmm. that i think that when they created the commission they didn't want everybody to be off at the same time so um right. and then that has in information in there about the at large and the um, and i district. think i'm filling out the rest of the t brandon's term yes. mm -hmm. is what happened yeah. and then i could yeah yes. I could and then i think leo is up through um 2019. oh good so yay <laughs> treat him well and hang hang on to him yeah he was just um officially appointed last night so that's why he's he was not notified today because the packets all went out last week and everything so well we'll we will make sure that he's notified here uh, for the may, <laughs> may meeting thank you 
Other announcements? Uh, tomorrow is the Chancellor oh. bike ride at the Campus Bike Center, 9 a.m. It's a really good time to meet the Chancellor and go on a bike ride and witness our sometimes really great and sometimes not so great bicycle infrastructure <laughs> with the Chancellor. It's really great. Um, there will be a, uh, a limited amount of donuts, so get there early. <laughs> Pump up your tires. Um, and, uh, you know, bring loads of uh, cameras and such to take a selfie with the Chancellor and a bike and a bike helmet and, um, and enjoy your morning if you choose to come. Where is the Campus Bike Center exactly? Campus Bikes, I'm glad you asked. It is um, not quite in Urbana or in Champaign, but it is at 608 East uh, Pennsylvania in Champaign, maybe. Uh, and <laughs> um, it is a uh, right next to the intersections of Pennsylvania and 6th Street. It's usually open Monday through Friday from 2 to 6, except on Fridays they close a little bit early at 5.30 is an absolutely fabulous educational resource in this community for learning more about bicycles, bicycle education, and bicycle repair, and a lot of the bicycle uh, groups that a lot of us are near and dear to our hearts and we organize many events with. Cool. And it, the forecast says it will be 67 degrees, which is perfect bicycling temperature. I don't see the wind uh, speed. That might be another thing, but uh, we have good wind breaks in town, so. Uh, I'd like to announce on the first Friday in May, the uh, Urbana first Friday downtown, um, uh, Imbibe Urbana is going to be hosting the Champaign Urbana Bike to Work Rally. Um, there will be live music. There will be beer. And there will be snail bike races uh, for the person who can ride the slowest. Um, there might also be, I'm trying, I would, well, there'll be like slow, steady. Um, and there might even be bracelets, uh, Lance Armstrong type bracelets that say I bike to work. So we'll see. <laughs> and then May, there's the free lunar cycle ride, which is, um, Cynthia, Cynthia and I, oh, Cynthia and I did one a uh, week or two. Last, last week? Last week. Mm -hmm. um, and it was five mm -hmm. miles, uh, and it was, didn't feel quite long enough. I think it's because the weather was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it was sort of strange to us. But when we were coming back, everyone's like, we're done? And we're, we're both like, yeah. Because um, five seemed long last time. Um, so next time, what we're going to do is going to be 10 miles. Uh, what we decided we think is going to be a better, maybe a better format for the bike ride will be to bike somewhere get a drink or a cup of coffee and then bike back. So we're going to be doing, out, we're going to bike out to Riggs. Um, so it'll be a 10 mile loop. Uh, and that is date here. It's May 11th. May 11th. Yes. And I, I wanted to announce some of the early events for bike month, uh, which starts May 1st. So Bike to Work Day is uh, May 2nd. You can register online, Google uh, CU Bike Month, and you can register. You will get a t-shirt. Uh, this year, the, uh, the art on our t-shirt is uh, to highlight uh, the contributions of, of minority cyclists. So we have two of the famous historic uh, black cyclists, uh, Kitty Knox and Major Taylor, are on our shirts this year. We will have rides throughout the month. There is a lot of exciting activity. Bike to School Day will be May 10th. Uh, as Annie said, the Lunar Cycle Ride is the 11th. We have um, a Mother's Day ride that will be on the 14th that will include a stop at the Mother's Day picnic uh, at uh, Riggs, out right on the patio. And so all of these things can be found. Uh, there's bike to market. There's a CU food cruise on the 20th. There's a traffic skills 101 class on the 27th. So we also have the Rite of Silence on the 17th uh, to commemorate and uh, draw attention to cyclists who have been uh, hit and killed while bicycling. And then we have, I think, a recumbent ride, by the way, it's a new ride on uh, Fridays. 
And there was one more big ride. Oh, we've got the, um, there's a big ride on the 20th for raising, what, cycle? Life cycle. Life cycle? It's called Life is a Cycle. Life is a Cycle. And it is a, um, it's targeting beginning riders, so it's going to be a nice slow ride. Um, we're going down, uh, starting at the market and heading down to and through Meadowbrook, out uh, through Stone Creek, and back up through neighborhoods and such to the market. Yeah, so I wanted to raise a, a attention for those because a lot of this activity will be happening prior to our meeting next month, which is the, <coughs> is it the 23rd? I think it's wrong on this calendar. It says the 22nd, and that's a Monday. That's what I thought. Yeah, we should get correct that. I just realized that's wrong. Okay. Any other announcements tonight? Everyone looks a little exhausted. <laughs> okay, if there are no uh, further announcements, then do we have a motion to adjourn? Wait, future topics? Oh, I'm sorry, future topics. I'd like to talk next month about, uh, so I, I have been getting complaints about cars and bike lanes in the university <laughs> district. Um, and so I would like to present to you guys some of the visual proof that people have been sending unsolicited to me um, <laughs> frequently. Uh, I just found a subreddit about it too as well. So that's fun. You found a what? A subreddit on, on Reddit. Oh, I see. So I would love to bring in some of the, okay. the findings and uh, talk a little bit about what we can do for a solution. Okay. Even if it's in the, the university district, there are a lot of hazards. Um, plenty of them are in Urbana. Okay. Any other future topics? Kevin? I'm not, since I'm not uh, an actual member of the commission, I'm not sure if I can bring up future <laughs> topics. You certainly can. Um, certainly but can. for a while, I've been wanting to talk about language and the language that we use to talk about uh, people riding bikes and people walking. Um, mm -hmm. I read a good article a while back about um, the, well, in Seattle, they were experiencing what's called bike lash, where there were folks driving and folks biking that were sort of uh, really at each, other, each other's throats. And when they changed the language that they used to talk about things, things got a lot better. Um, not saying we experience that here, um, but I try and make a conscious effort to talk about people walking, people biking, people yeah. driving. And I, I feel like in my own mind, it helps remind myself that we're all, you know, we're all just people when it comes down to it. And um, it tends not to separate us into these little tribes. So and you would such. like to make so a presentation? I, I guess I, I guess I would at some point. I believe Kevin volunteered to make a presentation on this topic. I can do that. Thanks. <laughs> Anything else? Motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Thank you all very much, very much for coming. We appreciate your uh, input and interest and activity. See you next month. Enjoy the weather. <laughs> <laughs>